of the Hall of Fame, Mr. Norman Lear. Thank you. Thank you very much. My association with television is mainly with comedy. But tonight I find myself as spokesperson for a gentleman who has brought honor and distinction to himself and to television in the news department. In searching for a link between news and comedy, I didn't have to look that hard. Because to a great extent, comedy relies on the news for its material. And sometimes it appears to work the other way around. Timing is not only the key to comedy, it's also the key to success in the field of electronic journalism, a phrase, by the way, which this gentleman coined. Upon his retirement from CBS, his good friend Walter Cronkite told the nation the way it was with this outstanding newscaster and commentator. After a 46-year career, 38 of them with CBS News, and the last 14 as a regular contributor to this broadcast, Eric Severide retires tonight. Here are his parting thoughts. Coincidentally, it was exactly 10 years ago this evening that the broadcast took place. One's influence cannot be measured. History provides for the journalist no markers or milestones, but he is allowed to take his memories. And what a legacy of memories this man has. Whether he was reporting the first landing of American forces on the southern coast of France during World War II, interviewing one of Britain's finest commanders, Lord Louis Mountbatten, or broadcasting the presidential election of 1948 with Edward R. Murrow, Eric Severide belongs to that rare breed of distinguished journalists who represent an era when covering a story meant active participation, being there when the story was happening. 1943, as a correspondent for CBS Radio during the China-Burma War, Eric Severide and 19 other men were forced to bail out of their crippled transport plane. For a month, he and his companions lived among a tribe of savage aborigines before making their way through 150 miles of perilous jungle to freedom. Of the experience, he later said, it was the canoe trip all over again. He was referring to another hazardous mission he undertook at the age of 18. He and a friend faced a terrifying 2200 mile race against the deadly grip of winter to prove they could reach the Atlantic entirely by water from Minneapolis. As a student, he covered the campus activities for the Minnesota Journal. On special assignment in 1932, he posed as a waiter attempting to interview a rising young star named Catherine Hepburn. Stricken by her beauty, he couldn't ask a single question. He left in misery, vowing never again to be timid. In London in 1939, Edward R. Morrow put together the original news team for CBS Radio and gave Eric Severide his first break. Basically a newsman, Eric had to cope with one problem, a sudden case of mic fright. Morrow told him, we don't expect anything sensational, just the truth. But the truth became sensational when Eric Severide first broke the news to the world in 1940 that France was about to capitulate to the invading armies of Adolf Hitler. He covered the political scenes as head of the Washington Bureau for CBS Radio from 1941 until 1943. After the war, an invention called television changed the image of the American reporter. Eric Severide was a pioneer of this important new visual technique and became an integral part of the renowned CBS News team, which included Mike Wallace, Walter Cronkite, Roger Mudd, and Dan Rather. Eric also took time out to be with his family, as he's pictured here with his twin sons, Peter and Michael. In 1952, Eric Severide took a brief break to return home to Velva, North Dakota. In his mind's eye, he saw that small rural town as it used to be in 1912, the year he was born in this trim white house. Perhaps he saw himself as a boy, dressed in his Sunday best for a formal family photo. Certainly, he recalled his days at Central High when he was editor of the school newspaper. And his trip was all the more memorable when he enjoyed a reunion with his mentor, Bill Francis, who had encouraged his interest in newspaper work those many years ago. Good evening. From Good newspapers idea. to radio to television, Eric Severite has always been noted for his dedication to the truth. Throughout the years, he has brought his audiences some of the most challenging and informative programs, both on the CBS network and more recently on the public broadcasting system. In 1977, with his present wife, Suzanne St. Pierre, and his daughter, Christina, Eric Severide braced himself once again for the winds of change. 
With one phase of his career coming to a close, Eric Severide's final regular network appearances were his daily commentaries on CBS Evening News. His last one contained this incisive summation. There is in the American people a tough, undiminished instinct for what is fair. Rightly or wrongly, I have the feeling that I have passed that test. I shall wear this like a medal. For his ability to write and deliver commentary fairly and perceptively on the great issues of our time, and for his dedicated support of the highest standards of electronic journalism, the Television Academy Hall of Fame proudly reveals as its lead story the induction into its ranks of Eric Severide. <laughs> Great thanks to this academy and this remarkable man, Mr. Lear. I guess I'll always think of this moment as the summit of my, uh, my own broadcasting life. And by grace and good luck, and Ed Murrow, I was able to report a good deal of this frightening and fascinating century's most terrible news story, the worldwide war. And by luck, I caught the early tied to the first truly new form of journalism ever, information and ideas by sound and then by sound and picture. We were trying to institutionalize this new medium at the best level of thought and values of which we were capable. We had to create traditions, as it were, and that's a confusing enterprise. The history's simple commands upon our business, I think, remain what they were to inform, to amuse, to instruct, to inspire all four. Americans are not at heart a, a trivial people. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>